thank you. My name is Essan, uh, and I, today I will talk about translating place-related questions to GeoSparkU uh, queries. So to start, what is a place-related uh, question? It's, it can be simply defined as a natural language question about geographical places, such as we have an example in here, how many pharmacies are within 200 meters of high street in Oxford? And if we uh, want to answer such question, we have uh, two usual approach in general for question answering. We have database oriented and document oriented uh, question answering. In database oriented, either we have a knowledge base or a database, somehow we have a structured data and we need to translate the natural language question to formal queries. And then we can uh, generate or retrieve the answers. While in document oriented, we have a uh, textual document on a, on, a, on a structured text, and we need to match the content of the question to the content of the documents. In this study, we have focused on database-oriented uh, question answering for place-related questions using knowledge graphs. So why is structured data are good for answering place-related questions? If we take a look uh, to the example, we see that we can use spatial analysis to answer such question. For example, within 200 meters of high street defined an area inside uh, the world that we, we want to search for pharmacies over there. As you see in this picture, this is a 200 meter buffer from the high street. And actually what we want to do is to find out how many pharmacies are inside this area. So often in place related uh, questions, we have to perform a spatial analysis and we have complex or multiple criteria such as proximity, containment, and non-spatial operations. That's why structured data are quite useful for place-related question answering. To do so, we need to have a spatially enabled knowledge base, a knowledge graph that not only has attribute information about places, but also geomet geometrical information in terms of points, line, and polygon. So, to query such knowledge base, there is a standard query language called GeoSparkU, and you see an example in here. This example is trying to find restaurant in Melbourne. And when we use uh, GeoSparkU query over a spatially enabled knowledge base, we can perform a spatial analysis, such as simple geometric operations like distance, area, and convex hull, or topological relationships such as containment or cross. This is the overview of the method that we, that we have proposed for generating GeoSparkle queries out of uh, natural language place-related questions. Uh, in the first step, we perform an encoding to extract relevant information from the content of place-related questions, such as place names, place types, event name, event types, spatial temporal relationship, dates, activities, situation, and so on. After extracting what kind of information presented in the question, we need to find out how these information units are related to each other. And then we can use the domain knowledge, the object-based conceptualization of place to translate the question in terms of a logical representation based on a very few concept, location, place, event, properties, and relations. So with a few concepts, we can model place-related questions and using logical representation, we can capture a formal representation of a natural language question. Now, finally, this logical representation can be mapped to GeoSparkle using the dynamic uh, template-based query generation that I will talk about it later. During this study, we have used a uh, geospatial gold standard data set provided by Punjani et al. We use their knowledge base as well, but we have extended it using uh, OpenStreetMap data set. So the in the first encoding part and relation identification, we mainly use uh, pre-trained models for part of speech tagging and also fine-grained uh, name entity recognition to understand uh, what is presented inside the question. Uh, the table shows how the part of speech are related to the information units that we want to extract from the question. And after extracting these uh, information units or encodings, we need to find out what is the relationship between them. And we have proposed a heuristic method, a rule-based heuristic method uh, using dependency yeah. parsing and constituency parsing to identify how these are related to each other. For example, within 200 meter is a special relationship that link pharmacies to uh, high street. 
So that's what we want to extract from dependency parsing or constituency parsing. And again, here we have used the state of the art inferring models to perform it. After finding what are the encodings and uh, what are their relationships, we can express uh, content of the question as a logical mm -hmm. statement that formally captures what is inside the question. The logical statement contains two parts. It mm -hmm. contains what is the answer or the intent mm -hmm. of the question, given what criteria or the criteria part of the question. So uh, referring to the example, how many pharmacies is what we want to find out. And the criteria for, for that is those pharmacies should be between 200 meters of high street in Oxford. And to identify the intent of the question, uh, we propose a rule-based uh, heuristic method using question board, using the phrases that are identified over there, and also by removing the candidates uh, when, uh, when, the, when we apply the phrase. This is the logical representation uh, this is the logical representation of the example question. We need to find out uh, how many X0 exist and X0 is a pharmacy uh, with the criteria that it should be within 200 of high street. After having the logical representation, then we can think about generating executable queries out of what we have formally captured from the content of the question. So uh, to do so, we need to have a knowledge base. As I said before, we have used the Yago to Joe knowledge base provided by uh, people, uh, provided by Punjani in 2019. But the problem with that data set is that uh, in terms of place type, it is quite limited. So we added uh, and extracted information from OpenStreetMaps for more than 500 types of places, in total more than 1 million place entities about amenities, shops, natural features, buildings, offices, and etc. And uh, the next step, next step in the pipeline is to generate the executable query. And if you want to make an executable query, we need to match the information that are extracted from the question to what we have inside the knowledge base. So we need to perform concept identification for event name and place names. And we need to perform ontology mapping for properties, place types, and event types uh, to find out which kind of uh, vocabulary in, in the ontology are suitable for what we have extracted from the content of the question. And for the ontology mapping, we have used the BERT embedding for both labels uh, and uh, definitions that we have as a glossary inside the uh, knowledge base. And we have used cosine similarity to find out what are the candidates. Uh, we also tuned the process based on the percent of the place types that we had in the, uh, in the knowledge base. As you see in this example, it's a one to n relation. If we have extracted river from the content of the question, river could be a stream, could be a river, or could be a brook inside the ontology of place types that we have in our knowledge base. And finally, Generating the uh, executable queries done by a dynamic template-based query generation. The dynamic template-based query generation is based on uh, defining templates, predefined templates uh, for each part of the GeoSparkle query, and then concatenating and uh, restructuring the query to, to form the whole uh, GeoSparkle query. It's different from what uh, other people have done before. They have defined like a question type, and a template for the whole question instead of uh, generating the query based on the information that are extracted from the question. These are the results of uh, our works. So the first step, uh, the information extraction is highly accurate. And the reason is that the current pre-trained models that we have for part of speech tagging and uh, name entity recognition are performing really well, even though they are like uh, trained for uh, normal sentences, not questions, they perform really well for, for the questions as well. And also this validates that uh, simple rules for part of speech can, uh, can, be, can be used for extracting those encodings from the questions because we, we have received high precision recall and F-score for, uh, for the data. The more detail, uh, for the more detailed information presented in the paper, we have it for, for each encoding type. And uh, here is just a summarized version. 
The logical statement in overall are 85% accurate, and these are compared to manually uh, generated logical representation for questions. Mm -hmm. We see that uh, in general it's highly accurate, but for conjunction it's a bit lower, in terms of lower and less precise compared to others. That's why if we have a conjunction, uh, we should apply the same um, operations to the left side and right side of the conjunction. And that's why uh, the error will be propagated at, for the conjunction as well. If you have an error in terms of spatial relationship, then it will be propagated for conjunction as well. The ontology mapping uh, and uh, concept identification results are shown in here. In general, the concept identification is much easier because it's uh, simply based on the labels and names. Uh, but the ontology mapping is a bit more tricky. That's why we have a lower average price uh, precision in here, but we have a high recall. Uh, but in overall, I think the BERT embeddings are performing really well because the ontology mapping task is uh, quite uh, challenging. And finally, we compared the, our result with previous work from the uh, literature. We have Punjani et al. 2019, Punjani et al. 2021, and uh, Lee et al. 2021. And uh, our method uh, works better in terms of uh, generating correct queries and also generating answers, um, relevant answers to, to the question. And we have improved the state-of-the-art method by 14%, roughly. And finally, I want to just show you a demo about the work. This is available in this website. Feel free to use it. We have only information for UK. This is a question. What is the name of closest pop to Trafalgar Square? We see the result of information extraction. This is an attribute. Pop is a place type. Trafalgar Square is a place name. And closest to a spatial relationship. This is the logical representation generated by the method. We want to find out x0. x0 is a name. It's a name of a pop. And the pop should be closest to Trafalgar Square. This is the human readable uh, GeoSparker query because it's, it doesn't perform the concept identification and ontology mapping. This is the executable query. As you see in here, we have uh, mapped the pops to amenities, uh, landmarks, uh, barroom. And some of them are, of course, not completely correct. And finally, we have the result. The result is the admiralty. And if we check Google map for this one, this is a Trafalgar square. And the result, the admiralty is a bar in here, which is quite near to Trafalgar square. If we go back to the demo and change the pop to cafe and then try it, then we, we will see a minor difference in terms of information extraction. This time we have cafes as place type. Uh, we have a different ontology, uh, ontology mapping in here, amenity, cafe, bakeries, restaurants, those kind of places are selected in the ontology mapping. And the cafe on the square is the result. If we go back, we will see the closest cafe over there, the cafe on the square. And finally, if we change the question to a where question, where is the closest cafe to Trafalgar Square? We will see that the result is a point-based representation of the cafe on the street. And of course, in logical representation, we, we want to find out the location. And if we go back to Google, we will see a similar location for the cafe on the square. In conclusion, what we have done in here, the contributions can be summarized as improving the current uh, methods in translating questions to queries, uh, just queries using uh, the domain knowledge object-based conceptualization of place. Uh, using logical representation in the translation process is also one of the contributions because then we can use other kind of uh, formal uh, query languages such as spatial, uh, spatial SQL in the process and reuse the method partially for, for that task as well. And finally, we have presented an enhanced uh, data set and enhanced knowledge base, and also tested how BERT uh, performed in terms of ontology mapping for geographical features. The limitation of the work is mainly based on uh, the data set. The data set for GeoSparky of are quite limited, often in terms of hundreds. What we have used in here is uh, 
uh, the most well-known one, which is um, two, 200 uh, questions and 200 GeoSparkle queries. And we are trying to collect questions using the demo for, for improving that. We also uh, want to try paraphrasing uh, NLP models to normalize the question because the flexibility of language is a challenge for, for our approach. Our approach is a rule-based and, uh, and it could be quite limited in terms of handling the flexibility of language. Also transfer learning could be an option because uh, we have really good methods for generating questions, uh, ge generating the Sparkle queries from natural language questions and those can be partially used uh, in, uh, partially used for generating your Sparkle queries. So that's it. Thank you so much for your time. And uh, please let me know what are the questions, comments, and feedback. Thank you. Thanks, Ezan. We are one minute over, so we used 30% of our question time. But are there any questions that. already from the audience? Lena, I don't know. Have you seen some questions in other channels? Um, no, no question. Okay. Uh, actually, I would have a question, Ezan. I would be very interested on slide nine. You have this comparison with other um, other yeah. approaches, other yeah, last, yeah. last table. Could you just give us an um, intuition in what way, what are the major differences of your approach to the, the other ones that you compare? Um, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. So the GeoQA, uh, both of them are from the same community, uh, but different year. We have like an improved version in 2021 uh, from Punjani et al. And they have used also rule-based method, but what they have used in here, they have used a uh, static template for the whole query instead of generating it dynamically. So try, they, they try to match everything using rules in the same time instead of breaking down the process into a pipeline pipeline of process for encoding, relation identification, and so on. That's the major difference between what we have proposed in here and uh, the previous one. The neural GeoQA, which I was author of that one as well, uh, we have tried to use neural networks in here. I was the second author. And uh, the problem with the neural network is that when the data is limited, you cannot use it. It's quite powerful, but the data yeah. is not uh, enough for, for the complex mm -hmm. task. That's why we see that uh, a simple rule-based method using the pre-trained model um, works much, much better in terms of the accuracy. And uh, the correct queries are, um, this is what they have uh, reported in their paper. And uh, we have used this similar approach in here. It was manually judged by three person. And if two person agreed that the query is a correct query, then uh, we move further because the ontology mapping is the tricky part. Uh, whether a bakery is a good match or, or not, people have disagreement about it. That's how we, we deal with it. And finally, the, answer, the answers, we have only reported the precision in here. So we compared the precision of the result for human-generated query versus the automatic-generated query. 